All right, is it rolling? Yeah. Oh, great. Hi, I'm Dakota Gamble. I'm a local director slash producer, and I'm gonna go around and ask a couple local film nerds some questions about what they're doing. <laughs> Are you ready? No, that's a, that's a rhetorical question. I moved to California after I graduated high school to pursue film and TV. It's not like I was just given everything. I've worked for what I wanted and, you know, to be rewarded with such gratitude from people that I don't even know is more than words that I can explain. You have to want nothing else in order for this to be what you want to do because if you're not 100% focused and 100% committed to this industry, it will never happen. And then once you establish yourself and you start creating a name for yourself, people start to want to work with you and they reach out to you. My first job was actually a music video for Buster Rhymes and for In the Ghetto. And I was young, still young at the time, but it was the best, the best moment of my life being on set. And I was like, I want to do this for the rest of my life. And training with people is probably my most favorite thing because I get to learn their skill and they get to bring me into their world, such as people that fight or people that work with car stunts or people that work with um, rigging. There should never be a moment where you try to up somebody or you try to show off because that is one, endangering the people around you and yourself. And if you're brought in for a, for a job, you should be doing that job only. We recently kind of restructured the band to just the four of us. So we're working on recording some of the stuff that we had released previously and getting that out. Uh, before that, our main prerogative was to play as many shows as possible. Yep. Um, which we accomplished, actually. <laughs> we, yeah. we have this dynamic where we kind of see each other all like push forward a little bit more. And I just kind of like feel the need to push further. I guess there's been a couple. It's like getting the right people for the band is one. Uh, and playing the right place is definitely yeah. A, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like a close second. If, if you keep trying to find a solution, if you keep fighting for the thing that you really want, then absolutely it's gonna survive because the only thing that keeps Tantiv alive is us. Yeah. And so as long as we want Tantiv to be a thing, then it'll be a thing. <laughs> There were so many sneaky things that happened in the music industry back then, and I'm sure now too. And I'll never forget, after we finished singing La Freak, Luther looked at me and he said, that's the worst piece of shit we ever sang. You just keep going and, and, and meet, maybe reach other people. You know, find out who else is doing something, who's doing what, you know. But I just believe that um, a lot of people give up on their dreams. Somebody's going to hire you. Somebody's going to say you're the right one. And that's the problem with this industry. So many people don't say you're the right one, so you assume you're not. So you believe that, you either go on and become a grocery manager, whatever it is. But I think that when you're good at something, I believe that God's given you something and you need to go with it. Being able to create a character, because you know everybody from the start, who you know the writers have their character created, and nobody except them has an image of what it looks like. So. You know, the costume designer, hairstylist, the actor themselves, the makeup artist. It's like creating this image that somebody else has created, but making it a reality. I think that's really cool. It's really fast paced, um, especially when you're working on and off the set, getting them prepped before and afterwards and during. Uh, it's just like a lot of just go, 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 like things need to be done last second or change last second. 
Whereas like if you're in a salon, you get to take your time. For me, it took 1600 hours to be a licensed cosmetologist. So pretty much you're going five days a week, eight hours a day. You're there all day in classrooms, on the floor, to the clients. Um, and they like obviously teach you all this stuff in school. And then you have to take two tests afterwards. It's a practical and online exam. So you pretty much like have a dummy and it's a four hour exam for the first part and you have to go in front of like the state board and perform like all the haircuts you've learned, all the procedures. And then you have to take a two hour um, computer test. And if you pass all of those, then they give you your license. There was a challenge there and I feel that I overcame it because they were like the actor and I had five minutes, 10 at the most. I'm like, all right, what are you doing? What what are you gonna look like? What's your personality? What's going on here? If you stay focused and diligent and you get the license, then your possibilities are endless. You can do a wide variety of things. I've seen so many people go into the hair industry and you can tell by looking at them even while they're working that it's not what they really want to do. So make sure it's what you really want to do because it's not just a job, it's art, it's passion, it's expression. It's not something you just pick up and do because you want to make money. Listening to everyone's answers and getting to know why they picked up a job in this crazy industry really makes me happy and makes me glad that I made this my career. Getting to see what makes the people love the entertainment industry makes me want to continue pursuing it even more. I mean, I love it. I love the people, the energy, everything. And that's why we do it. I mean, right? Now we're going to make a quick transition to another gorgeous human being behind the wheel while we have a sad piano piece introduced in the next sequence. MOVE, BITCH! As long as you go in not saying I have to get this particular part, your talent's going to shine through and they will remember you and you will get work. But sometimes it's really difficult. You want something so badly. And because somebody has a higher network queue or somebody else as a three picture deal or you don't look like the family, you'll end up not getting a part that talent wise you were really right for. There is no anything stopping someone. You take every barrier and every wall and you make it a gate. And even if the gates are rusted, open the gate or climb over the gate or figure out your way. I remember Gary Marshall, famous director. I went to hear Gary speak once and somebody asked, do you have any advice for young actors? And he said, yes, nobody ever died from embarrassment. The most difficult part of what you do, I think, for any actor or for any actress or for anybody wanting to go into this business or into this industry is that it's not always about your talent. There's a lot of people who really are truly means to an end, who are bartending because they need that money to make that first thing. So people look at it like, wow, this dude knows what's up. Like, yeah, here's my money. Uh, but then there's a lot of other kids that come out here, you know, and they pass on jobs. You know, there's not the right budget. There's not enough money. Dude, you just got here. Take it. Take any of it, period. What's kind of cool is that if you never make it big, if, like, this is it. If what you're doing right now is what you're going to do for the rest of your life, you're okay with it. It's for you. There's a lot of kids, oh, I just got on a full sale. I'm like, my, I got this awesome gig with like this awesome dude. I'm like, that's great. That's all good for you, man. And if that, you know, if that becomes something, that's great. But there's a lot of kids who like kind of just talk out of their ass about what they, what they think they're worth. And because of that, they turn down a lot of jobs and they don't do a lot of things that they should be doing. So it's really committing yourself to doing it and just going all out. You still learn creativity, you learn discipline. It's a different way of expressing yourself without words, and I think every child can benefit from any type of dance, even if that's not what you hope to do in the future. Because dance is life, and to dance is human. People should love dance because it's just freedom. It's literally just whatever you're hearing when the music and your body just kind of takes over. It's that feeling of ecstasy where you just are so happy and you just are doing some stupid little lame dance and there's no judgment, there's no caring. It's just you expressing your true self. It's that moment of bliss because you're just living. 
because we have this idea of always needing to work, always needing to make money, always having to be doing something that we get so tired and booked out and then we put on the music and then we get back happy again because we dance to it. I wanted to be a makeup artist ever since I was nine years old when uh, my grandma put red lipstick on me and I just felt super pretty and I wanted to make other people feel that pretty too. You need to know everyone's um, weaknesses and everyone's strengths because if you put someone that doesn't know how to do something and that's their main thing to do, then they're not gonna strive. So you want them to strive as well in working as a team. So we do need to know what they can do, how well they can do it, how fast they can do it. Because even time management is crucial. Learning things for the first time on set is really stressful, but it's also fun because you never thought you could actually learn it that fast and on the spot. We would not have movies, we would not have plays, we wouldn't have anything if it wasn't for makeup. And that's why I love, love, love makeup. And that's my true passion. Doing stuff with film just feels right. Like when I watch it, and I'm like, okay, this is the part that brings the suspense, this is the part that brings the sadness. You know, like the violin, the trumpet, whatever is needed for the particular part, like that's what really drives me is because it brings everything together, which I want, and I know that everybody else needs. I started doing that, and then my old producer cut me off. He was like, oh, you'll never make instruments with the guitar. And then I learned guitar, piano, bass, ukulele, violin, uh, harmonica, just that little piece that I can contribute. It can make somebody feel heartfelt on a sad moment or happy during a happy moment. You know, like, I'm cool with it. I don't know, that's what brings me the most joy. It's not going out, it's not partying, it's not doing any of this stuff. It's sitting behind a computer screen in the dark room and getting into business, you know? There's no way that you won't succeed if you keep trying. If you keep trying, then you're good. If you stop, then psh, the dream's dead. It doesn't matter what you're doing, just, just keep on keeping on and it'll, it'll happen. If you have a talent, get out there and share them however you can do that. Create plays, create theater, create new projects, create anything that you can to be able to reach and touch people and never allow anyone to stop your dream or stop your vision. You do music because you love it and love is sacrifice. I just want more people to hear it. I want more people to experience and more people to feel the vibe. Instead of just like, oh damn, we're laying down the straight at the place. Come down to the, the hole in the wall. I want people to be like, oh shit. Or like, or internationally too, like, who's who who this? I'm Diva Gray and I want to tell everyone, I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you and you should believe in yourself. <laughs> So the big picture here is don't give up on yourself. You're gonna get a million no's. All that matters yeah. is that one yes. Right. <laughs> Were you here for that shot? <laughs> Immediate rest, the middle of things. That's just what we are, that's what we do. Whether you're in front of the camera dealing with an actor that you hate offset because his ego is bigger than the Wu-Tang Clan, or you're behind the camera trying to make the ugliest D-list actor look pretty. That is what we do, that's what we specialize in. So we can make something for you to go see and escape the world that you're living in right now. It's what we love to do, it's what makes us passionate about our art. I'm Dakota Gamble, and this is Anidius Rez. Hey, shut up, that's my line!